दिमाग की बीमारी नहीं है ये आई बी एस इज द कंडीशन वेर वी हैव अ सोल्यूशन बिकॉज एनिमा इज नॉट डन द राइट वे इट कैन क्रिएट मोर प्रॉब्लम देन गुड इट इज नॉट अ लॉन्ग टर्म सोल्यूशन यू शुड नॉट डू इट लॉन्ग वाइल वी आर वर्किंग ऑन देर कॉज वी हैव टू गिव देम सम रिलीफ थ्री मंथ ऑल सिम्टम्स वेंट अवे So one is IBS, irritable bowel syndrome. Have you ever got gone irritable? Hundred percent, friends. Right, all of us get irritable. Correct. And that's what happens with our gut. Our gut mm. gets irritable. Okay. And that's the reason we have so many patients today of irritable bowel syndrome. Mm. Gut getting irritable. Simple. What changed my success rate for IBS was when I realized that it is not a psychosomatic disease. दिमाग की बीमारी नहीं है ये इट इज नॉट कमिंग फ्रॉम योर स्ट्रेस और फ्रॉम योर ब्रेन दैट कुड बी वन कॉन्ट्रीब्यूटिंग फैक्टर बट इट्स नॉट द हंड्रेड परसेंट पिक्चर इट इज एन इन्फेक्शियस डिसऑर्डर द मूवमेंट दिस परस्पेक्टिव चेंज फॉर मी दिस नॉलेज केम इन फ्रंट ऑफ मी द होल गेम फॉर आई बी एस पेशेंट इन माई केस चेंज सो राइट दैट टाइम आई वॉज यू नो आई थिंक दिस इज फोर फाइव ईयर्स बैक आई वॉज आई हैड थ्री आई बी एस पेशेंट गोइंग ऑन एट एट द सेम पॉइंट and how uh, so one of these patients was very interesting and i think i owe a lot to her because that's when i started studying and finding ki there has to be a solution fm has to give me something about this patient an army person retired mm -hmm. principal in an international school mm -hmm. and when i started fm i thought that there are two people i want to benefit a lot my mom retired as a teacher and i think I respect all my teachers who have taught me till now because that's why I am here where I am right and I started doing free workshops for teachers trying to tell them what is food meditation okay why is it that it is important that you take care of yourself because then there are 50 people in one class and there are about 30 40 50 classes mm -hmm. out of which every 3 4 classes 5 classes you are responsible for so see the impact you can do if you start doing something for your own self correct okay and I happen to go in this um, in the school which was 2 hours drive from my place and uh, when i was about to finish the session this principal came and said do you have time can you come to my room for 10 minutes i said yes and you know what she shared she shared dr priti i don't know if you have something for ibs but my problem is i am sitting in a meeting mm -hmm. right and suddenly my pants my panties will have feces in them and i will have to rush to the washroom to clean myself mm -hmm. I cannot travel anywhere. I can't do a lot of things. The moment stress happens, I poop. Imagine that life. And these are all signs of an irritable gut. Exactly. Imagine. And she she said I've been to every possible hospital, Fortis, Max, Medanta. They've said IBS but no solution. Log try karte na, log online ja ke they'll eat more fiber, pani peenge, they'll have more probiotics. but none of this seems to work exactly so this is where my journey started and i told her okay let's start with diet and then we will see more so we removed i am a big fan of elimination diet i have done it with almost um, 15 1600 people and people say doing elimination diet is different difficult but none of my customers have ever come and told me or clients that i can't do elimination diet okay right they're very happy doing it and she did elimination diet and she was 60% 70% all right it means she removed certain food items exactly and her symptoms started to improve, improve because she was allergic to some food items hmm then she did that she was so much better then we started working on her infections on her gut then we started later adding good probiotics prebiotics and uh, amazing and that's where i started working with ibs a principal crying in front of me and telling me can you help me save myself to the point that she is perfectly all right contributing to lives of so many children very very dynamic personality mm -hmm. now she has started two three more initiatives amazing personality mm -hmm. and from then on till now i've had lots of ibs patients and um, when they come to me you know they say my family thinks i have a psychiatric problem because when they were diagnosed with irritable bowel syndrome doctor said it's a psychiatric condition it is coming from their mind 
right? And they generally give them antidepressants or anti-anxiety pills mm. to keep them calm so that their gut improves, but their gut doesn't improve. How do you identify what food you are insensitive to? In IBS, no, it is not important whether you are allergic to something or insensitive to something. Okay. What is important is you need to find out what is triggering your IBS. Okay. Okay, the foods which trigger your IBS. Mm. So there is a list of foods which normally trigger your IBS. Gluten, dairy, peanuts, mm. soya, mm. processed foods, mm. sugar, mm. especially sweeteners which we use, which are sugar-free, mm. right? They lead to a lot of bloating. Mm. And people think sugar band kar diya, so let's start with sugar sweeteners. Mm. But that doesn't help them at all. Mm. So what I do is I tell them to omit these for three weeks. Mm. Clean. And I am very clear about this, that when you are omitting this for three weeks, it is like you are married. And if you eat this, it's like an extramarital affair. I don't know what your culture permits, but I would strongly want you to follow Indian, old Indian <laughs> culture here, right? And, uh, and luckily people do that. Okay. People are able to do that because I'm very clear in telling them the second thing also that if you cheat today, from tomorrow your day one starts because I need a clean gut for three weeks for you to know. Mm. And then you add those foods, one food at a time, Two times in a day for two days. Mm. Sometimes, you know, it takes 48 hours and a certain threshold amount of food to create symptoms. Mm. Right? You've done this three weeks celibacy period. And after that, if you don't take the right amount or right duration, you will not know what's happening. Mm. Immediately, you know your symptoms. So, for example, I'll tell you, I had this IBS girl with PCOD and she joined my gut health program. Okay. I put her on elimination diet in the group program because I think group programs work best for things like this. You can't do it alone, but when you have 30 more people doing it with you or 50 more people, you're very comfortable. If she can do it, I can do it too. If he can do it, I can do it too, right? And she lost about three and a half kgs and her energy improved and everything in three weeks. And for a female to do that for PCOD girl, it's not a joke, right? And then she introduced gluten. Okay. In two days, she gained back two and a half kgs. So two times a day gluten for two days. Two and a half kgs back. Unbelievable. And you know what she told me? She she was a Punjabi. And Punjabis, bina pranthe ke, they are like half. Right? And she said, even if now somebody will force me to eat a prantha, I am not going to do that. At least of gluten atta or wheat atta. And that's how powerful this gets. So first is you have to see triggers. See, it's very simple. I'm sure all of us have gotten hit when we were children. Mm. Why? Because on joints, we kept hitting again and again and all those things we crushed used to come off. And therefore, the mark is still there. Mm. Till the time you're taking this trigger foods, your gut will keep getting irritated. And what happens if I do like this to you? You say, who? I do it again. Kya ho I do it again. Abhi That's how your irritability increases. Hmm. That's how your gut's irritability increases. And if you don't remove those irritable factors, then it becomes a chaos. Second, stress can also be a trigger. Stress is not a cause. It's not a mental condition. Okay. But remember your gut and your brain are connected through your vagus nerve. Right. Right. And the moment you are stressed, your gut gets triggered. Even if you're eating the right food yeah. under a stressful condition, you might have irritability. Exactly. Second, when you are eating in stressful condition, mm. your absorption will decrease multifold. Mm. That's the reason, you know, I feel since I've come to functional medicine, I'm from a convent school, mm. nuns convent school, mm. right? Used to pay a fine of 25 paisa for every Hindi word spoken. I did not know this. Okay. <laughs> right. Yeah. And, but having said that, from there, since I've come to functional medicine, I have started loving myself for being an Indian from coming from such a rich culture. Mm. The simple thing of praying before eating. It had a purpose. It used to stimulate our vagus nerve. It used to calm our mind mm. so that our absorption could improve. Mm. Simple. Now what we do? 
we are watching TV, we are thinking so much, we are stressed out, we are frustrated, we are angry and we are eating. Food is an autopilot activity today. Exactly. Mm -hmm. And what does autopilot mean? Food is not calories, please. Food is information. Food is messenger. Food makes your genetic content. Mm. So it's so vital that you at least give 30 seconds before food to pray. We all know water has memory. Yes, now. Right. Please give it some memory. Positive memory. So that's one. Another reason for IBS which I found is infections. Which is what I want to come to, right? So after you remove some of the triggers. Right. Like you said, IBS will not heal. It will only stop the irritability to some extent. Exactly. The healing starts with infection. Is that the role that infection plays? Yes. Infections and hormones. Let's start with infections. What type of infections are we talking okay. about? So generally what I have seen is that H. pylori has increased. Mm -hmm. I see a lot of cytomegalovirus and abstain bile virus which are mm -hmm. known for uh, you know causing autoimmune conditions. Mm -hmm. I see a lot of Klebsiella E. coli also these days in my patients. Mm -hmm. So once I get them tested, mm -hmm. second observation I've had is that even if they have old infections, they have IgG high, IgM is not high, mm -hmm. right? They still have symptoms. And I'll tell you who taught me this. Patients teach you the most. These books only give you an idea of what you have to look into. Mm -hmm. So this is a patient. She's a vice president in a company. Okay. And she joins my elimination diet program. And post elimination diet, she comes from an upgrade program. She says, I'm a VP in a company. I'm earning good. My husband is in London. He is earning well. But ma'am, my life is so miserable because I cannot eat anything. Mm. I have no energy. I just go to the office, do my work and post that I'm dead. What is happening? I got a test checked. CMV, EBV, 400, 600, IgG, old infections. Mm. I just treated them. Three months. She was perfect. She was perfect. Now she's, tr she's in London. She was not going to London because she said, I can't eat anything here. And I have maids and everybody to take care of me. What will I do if I go outside? And she's just enjoying life. And every time she comes back, you know, one thing she ma makes sure she does is fixes the appointment with me, comes and meets me and finds out what more she needs to do for her health. That's incredible. Right. So till then, I used to think IgG is fine. But now I know, no, old infections also make a difference. So tell me, as a, a normal blood test will not tell you what infection you have. It's very hard to get this sort of so, information. Huh. So, there initially when I started, I used to get the GI map done from US. Okay. It tells me pathogenic flora, non-pathogenic flora, you know, parasites, fungus, everything. Mm. Mm -hmm. That's very expensive, $500, one month of waiting. Mm. Mm -hmm. Now, what I've done is I do a blood test only and a stool test. Okay. So, blood test, I get to know the immunoglobulins, IgG, IgM. I have found them very reliable when I match it with the history. Okay. See, one thing we have to remember. Tests are just tools to validate what you have already diagnosed by taking history. If it is vice versa you working, then you will never be able to heal patients for life. Hmm. Never. So history is very critical. You already know. For example, you know people who are working in offices, they would agree with me that they immediately in first 30 seconds decide whether they're going to hire somebody or whether they're going to work with somebody. Mm. Next 30 minutes, they spend on confirming if the decision is right or wrong. Mm. Right? Same goes for health. If, if in history, I know this is the problem, then I will do my test and support it with that. Your test just helps to validate. Exactly. It does not reveal the cause. For example, I'll tell you, for SIBO, small intestinal bubble overgrowth and small intestinal fungal overgrowth. Those are very commonly found in SIBO, IBS. 60% mm. of IBS patients are now documented to suffer from SIBO. Which means bacterial overgrowth. Exactly. At the wrong place. At the wrong place. So again, if you won't laugh, I will want to tell you, it's like an affair with your neighbor. <laughs> <laughs> because Galadagan the bacteria has to be in the colon. Yes, Small intestinal is the neighbor of a colon. Right. If the bacteria which has to be in the colon goes in the small intestine, it's like having an affair with a neighbor. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> and that is very, very common. And that's the reason sometimes SIBO is misdiagnosed as IBS also. Okay. Right? 
Difference between the two, you would think what's the difference? There's huge difference. With SIBO, there is no psychological element attached to it. IBS, people say it's a psychosomatic disease. Could a 60% of IBS patients have SIBO? Shouldn't a normal course of antibiotics sort of, you know, help? Yes, so that's a very good question. I was about to come to that. So one is SIBO. How do we diagnose it? History is the best. Mm. People keep telling me, please do test, please do test. My challenge in doing tests is, we do, you know, gas test, hydrogen gas or methane test. So breath test we do. Mm. Hmm? Diarrhea based, hydrogen aega. Mm. Constipation, agar history mein, methane aega. Mm. But in 30-35% patients, what happens is test comes negative. But I know this patient has SIBO. But the test is not accurate. Exactly. Why? Because there is hydrogen sulfide also with some bacteria produced and that's also causing SIBO. Mm. And what do I need to do? I need to check. Do you have foul smelling farts? Mm. Then it will not come in your regular SIBO test. Mm. So one, doing a SIBO is difficult in India. Mm. Right? Second, it's not as reliable. And history is like speaking loudly and clearly. I am here. I am at the wrong place. Please open the door. I am locked inside the neighbor's house. Get me out. Mm. Right? Mm. You have to listen to that voice. Right? Go with the treatment over. Exactly. So, so, it's very important that we take sharp history. Mm. Right? And uh, SIBO is like uh, a food baby. I would say. Why? Because the moment you eat food, you bloat. So signs of SIBO are bloating after a meal typically, right? Typical. Foul smell, either with its breath or fart. Yes. Got it. Right. Also, um, uncomfortable after eating food. Mm. Any meal will trigger some symptoms for them. Mm. All of that happens. Is there another test that you recommend for, for identifying some of this? Like a GI yes. map is so expensive. So, uh, Actually, no. I do these infection tests and I do nutrifit tests. Okay. So, nutrifit is another test which helps us find few very vital things about the gut health. Mm. One, it tells us about the mitochondrial activity. Okay. Now, as I was sharing with you before, mitochondrial activity in infected cases becomes so suboptimal. Mm. That body is working at its bare minimum energy. And that's the reason you will see IBS patients complain of lack of energy. Okay, very interesting. Right? The moment you stimulate the mitochondrial activity with the supplements, mm. hmm, what will happen is, die-off will start happening. Because when the cells start working, they will start pushing infections out. Mm. That's your body's work, no? Your body is made in such a beautiful way that it will take care if you don't mess with it. Very interesting. So, if you are increasing your mitochondrial activity, the cell function is coming back to normal. Exactly. Or jo cheez jahan nahi honi chahiye thi, se nikal dega. Exactly. So, die of symptoms will start. Hmm. So, in a lot of my celiac patients or bad IBS patients, what happens is that actually I have to give those supplements slowly and gradually. And inform the patient that if die off happens, let me know. We will titrate your dose here and there. No, so unko itna bloating ho jayega ya itna other exactly stomach pain hai. yeah stomach pain sleeplessness so the dosage is what matters here right dheere 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 you want to increase it so exactly. that the patient or the client can also accept it ke main heal ho raha hu main kuch alag nahi ho raha mere saath exactly but important is you know in this journey testing ib especially there is no one test which can tell you it is ibs okay. and that is the reason IBS, if your symptoms persist for three to six months, mm. that is when you label it as IBS. Because IBS is an autoimmune condition. Okay, very interesting. Yes, and once labeled, it will keep coming back because IBS might not go for life. Mm. Right? Because if you have to make sure that it goes for life, you have to make sure that you are living a healthy lifestyle. Mm. Right? And that's too much of a commitment. For a lot of people, actually. Yeah. But this is an autoimmune disorder. Hmm. Okay. Uh, the beauty of IBS is it will not land you in complications, hmm. but it will kill you every day, minute by minute, slowly, 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 slowly. Very interesting. We started with food acting as a trigger, infection often being either a root cause or very closely linked to the root cause. Yes. The third thing is hormones. Yes. So hormones, what happens is, you know, gut health, cannot be good if your hormones are not good and vice versa your hormones cannot be good if your gut health is not good mm, okay right 
and when i say hormones i also include neurotransmitters in it mm. okay 60 to 90% of your neurotransmitters are made in your gut mm. not in your brain mm. very true for serotonin right that's exactly. one of the key ones even dopamine a lot of it that kick which we all are looking for mm. you know for which we work day and night for which we want to do good things in life cut hmm very true yeah. so sometimes i have seen that i am not able to help people recover because they are either in adrenal fatigue okay they are in sexual imbalance mm. insulin resistance mm. what all this will lead to for example let's take insulin resistance mm. insulin resistance means gut dysbiosis will happen the environment inside is not ideal okay right How diabetic again since is blood sugar ke bare mein baat kar we only look at it from blood sugar standpoint what you were saying is it also has an impact on gut health. gut health okay big time mm. right then your hormones if you are low on progesterone mm. your sleep will be disturbed you will be stressed out mm. that stress will become a trigger for your ibs mm. adrenal fatigue mm. the clear link to that clear link to ibs right so unless i said their adrenal fatigue right mm. okay unless i break them to an optimal level i cannot expect complete recovery mm. no so it's like you have to do everything together but you also have to prioritize what needs maximum attention just to tell you i recently had a uh, you know client where her cmb eb was 1000 plus okay okay which is huge I generally get 200, 300, 400. In fact, her EB was EB was 3000. Hmm. So I had to take care of infections first. She recovered 60, 65%, and we came on a flat line. Hmm. Then I checked her hormones and realized she was in stage two adrenal fatigue. Corrected the hormones, her sleep improved, her stress management improved. See what is stress? This is also very important for us to understand. Stress. is not a situation mm. stress is your response to a situation yeah, right it's a mm. reaction to an event exactly mm. no now can you actually have control over your response you can you can but it requires training it requires training before training it requires awareness mm. and sometimes i call them calming down and sometimes i call them mood shifters mm. you have to know what do you need at what time when you need a mood shifter calming down will not help and when you need to calm down mood shifter will not help so what is the split so calming down is very clear what is a mood shifter an example of a mood shifter example of a mood shifter is i'm feeling very irritated with you and suddenly i pick up my phone and see my son's photo and i speak to him for a second and i am full of love and affection and everything and i can come back to you normally got it without harming my health and myself got it got right? it got it and uh, and in with people whom i work with i make sure they have all this readily available with them hmm. and this plays a huge role so just you know one of the things we normally talk about when it comes to stress management is sympathetic parasympathetic breathing restlessness etc how do you break it down right are any any pointers or tips that can help someone to move state right yes to move states yes initially i used to use breathing okay and now also i love this art of breathing mm. deep abdominal breathing mm. but what i've seen is i have had ibs patients who've tried for a month continuously but they have not been able to breathe properly okay because they are sympathetically active that the breathing is opposite normally both the diet so this diaphragmatic so breathing if is you can chest abdominal breath, breathing abdominal breathing right? that's what i recommend ah, okay. okay i'll tell them please breathe mm. when you breathe in your stomach has to come out mm. and when you breathe out your stomach has to go in right no movement in the chest but what people do this is, is a balloon ah. they do chest breathing ah. that's shallow breathing one second they do complete opposite mm. when they breathe in their stomach will go in mm. so it's like you breathing in but you held the neck of the balloon here mm. and say now let me know how you breathe mm. now let me know how you oxygenate mm. and they are unaware of the fact mm. from the time you are born to the time you die mm. one thing which decides you are born or you are dead is your breath 
and we have reached a stage where we don't know how to breathe properly. Mm. This is extremely ironical, but and an extreme emergency, which should be looked at, right? And I have seen people who are not able to do it for a month or so. I use two techniques. One is ho ha. Okay. Ho ha. Unknowingly, you breathe right because you are relaxed when you are speaking. You are relaxed. Huh. Okay. I make people sing loudly because their intestinal motility increases when they sing loudly. There are studies on this. Oh, very interesting. Okay. So all my IBS patients are mandatory forced to sing loudly. Despite the fact they have good voice, they have good, you know, they know any lyrics, I don't care. You have to sing loudly means you have to sing loudly, right? I also have on my YouTube fixed a 13-minute video for my IBS patients, especially mm -hmm. the constipated ones. Mm -hmm. Before they get up from the bed, they start doing those exercises mm -hmm. so that, you know, everything relaxes and automatically things start to build. Problem in IBS is motility of the colon is getting hampered. Mm -hmm. So everything you can do for motility and stress actually okay. affects. Which yes. means in an IBS situation, the speed at which food should move to your digestive system, it's not. Either it's too slow or too fast. Too fast. And yes. you want to adjust that speed. And one way to do that is stress management through breathing techniques. Exactly. Let me just quickly summarize that because there's a lot happening. Food triggers, hormones, infectious diseases, stress. And not even stress, it's sympathetic, parasympathetic management. The other, the fifth area that a lot of people focus on is physical activity. Whether that's yoga, whether that's any other form of, you know, high interval or low interval training or just hardcore strength training. What is the role that physical activity plays for IBS patients? So for IBS patients, for first three months, I tell them to go low on strength training and this, I prefer that they do brisk walking. Okay. Right. Three minutes fast walking, five minutes slow walking, three minutes fast walking, five minutes slow walking. Mm. I prefer that they laugh. That also burns a lot of calories mm. and it uses the right sorts of muscles in the right way. Mm. Because any stress will tear your gut lining apart. Okay. Which is already torn. You already have a leaky gut. You already have LPS. You already have zonulin. Mm. Right? So that is one I do. Mm. Okay. Second, I tell them to do breathing exercises, pranayam and all. And light exercises. Of course, 20 minutes morning, 20 minutes evening is what they have to do. But light exercises, not uh, excessive exercise. Not the way that they say that if you exercise, you will be healthy. Sorry. Exercise is another thing which I feel like statins, <laughs> right? It is quite a misused term these days. If mm. exercise would have been making people healthy, then you know about 20 years back, a lot of gyms came. Mm. We all would have become healthy. Have we become a healthier nation? Not at all. Not at all, right? So exercise is not the missing link. It is one of the parts of the puzzle. But what type of exercise you need to do, please, you must check with your doctor. For example, somebody with IBS, lot of stress, adrenal fatigue, I will tell them six weeks, no exercise. Mm. And I've seen people, you know, who start crying. Oh, exercise only makes me feel good. If I don't exercise, I'll feel shit. Mm. I say exercise makes you feel good for 30 seconds because of the kick you get. Mm. What about the 23 hours and, you know, 59 minutes and 30 seconds when you are going low and low and fading and catabolizing every minute? And it doesn't matter if this exercise is yoga or not yoga. I mean, no, no, it matters. It depends. You must do light exercise. You must mm. do flexibility exercises. You must do balance exercises. Mm. All that is important. But running too much, going for marathons, going for cycling drives, going for, you know, uh, these weight training, mm. hiring a trainer and saying, no, let's do this. Mm. That's not recommended. Understood. That's not recommended. So you have to change your exercising pattern. What is the role of probiotics or prebiotics when it comes to IBS? Right? I see a lot of people coming and talking about ye le liya, like farak nahi pada, ye le liya, acha laga. It seems like a complete hit or miss. So, you know, it's not black and white. Mm. Okay? Some clients where I said, I want to improve the terrain, mm. I will need all this. Mm. Right? But whether the client will be able to take it or not, the client will be able to tell me. Mm. Because probiotics, prebiotics, and polyphenols, mm. these three P's which are important, but what timing? Mm. Supposing I have a person who is severe SIBO with IBS, mm. I will first want to give them Rifagat, 
put them on a low carb diet mm. or an elemental diet mm. get them sorted once mm. and then gradually see what probiotics suit them what prebiotics suit them mm. for example if they have a lot of fungal infection mm. candida mm. right i will want to put them on saccharomyces boulardii so what type of probiotic also you you need bacteroids formicates ratio if not right i will want to put them on that kombucha is good anybody should be able to take it but kimchi you will have to see who can digest it who cannot what type so these are not black and white things you must do it with your functional medicine health coach or somebody who knows this art hmm one line of caution here is i was with sipla from 1998 to 2000 hmm. as a medical advisor and i used to train a lot of doctors on respiratory medicine okay and and that time we did a project on antibiotic resistance okay and i used to tell everybody please use antibiotics carefully because this can make or break not only your health but everybody's health around you hmm. right same thing i want to repeat for probiotics today very interesting probiotics are like antibiotics ha huh. yes use them cautiously use them when they are needed use them correctly and use them under proper guidance don't overuse them anything as a supplement at least don't overuse them of course in ibs patients when we have bad c4 small intestinal fungal overgrowth sometimes i have to stop all fermented foods also you talking about probiotics and prebiotics I have to stop all fermented foods in the beginning, mm. and then gradually start it up. But don't misuse probiotics. There are millions of bacteria which are there. Every probiotic comes with a different form, different type, and different strength. So this is something you recommend should be done under guidance, under guidance and not self-administered. Like an antibiotic. Mm. The way I don't want you to be taking is ethromycin or cefpodoxim. yourself i don't want you to be taking bsl3 enterogemina or any other probiotic on your own yourself that's incredible right i mean even even uh, just the sheer volume of people that approach their health from an otc probiotic standpoint is massive it's huge exactly but no instead have a balanced diet no like you were saying food is the best thing so have idli in your diet have batura in your diet at times um of course uh, with the different atta right and uh, have dhokla in fact you've picked a very good point right? i i've noticed a healthy diet zyada vegetables zyada fruits doesn't seem to work it doesn't it doesn't for ibs patients raw things almost a no for many of them correct you have to steam them so there has to be a balance guys and you have to listen to your body that's what i will want to tell you Right. are there certain types though of vegetables or fruits that you don't recommend or you recommend just from your experience yes. so for example cabbage mm. bad sibo bad ibs mm. it might trigger mm. okay but cucumber will not generally okay right second is i tell them whenever you take raw at least add some good oil over it okay okay that helps in absorption mm. 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 also you have to i am not a firm believer of raw diets and all mm. I also don't want my people to be taking celery juice every day or spinach juice every day. And you know why? Homocysteine is a parameter which I find in a lot of my IBS patients high. Okay. It impacts your cardiac health, your mental health, your gut health, your detoxification. Okay. Okay. Now what happens with this homocysteine is if you're taking a lot of spinach or celery, you're making your body work more. Your homocysteine is already high, your bees are already compromised. Hmm. मरे हुए को और मारने की कोशिश में लगे हो एंड देन यू आर थिंकिंग दैट यू आर गोइंग टू फील वेल हाउ सो स्पिनिच एंड सेलरी फॉल्स अंडर दिस ब्रैकेट एवरीथिंग कैन फॉल अंडर दिस ब्रैकेट फॉर समबडी ऑन दिस अर्थ अंडरस्टैंड यू नीड टू नो योर टाइप एंड अदरवाइज हैव एवरीथिंग इन बैलेंस डोंट गो क्रेजी बैलेंस इज द की योर बॉडी हैज टू बी इन बैलेंस आई हेट द वर्ड हेल्दी because it applies Honestly. differently to everybody no it is just a way of fooling people and taking 3x or 10x from their pockets understood just yeah. that